In this lesson, we'll learn how to move, rotate, and scale objects in Motion Builder. Let's say if we wanted to move our UFO around. Let's go ahead and select its Null. And with that selected, we can go to our side manipulator and choose the Translate tool or use the hotkey T on our keyboard. Now we're able to move this UFO anywhere we'd like. We can use the blue arrow to move forward and back in the Z axis or side to side using the red arrow in the X axis. And the green arrow is the Y axis to move up and down. We also have these corner manipulators that will allow us to move in two axes simultaneously. Or if you notice, right at the center we have this yellow manipulator for moving in all three axes. So that's the Move tool. We could also rotate our objects using the hotkey R or simply choosing the Rotate tool from the side toolbar. So you can see as we click from the center and start to drag this rotate tool around, we're able to rotate in all three directions. Bring your attention to the lower part of the viewer window and you'll see these coordinate fields. And these basically represent the amount of rotation we're, we're giving this object. Same thing goes for our move tool. Going back to our move tool, pressing the T key, notice we're given the values, the precise values of where we're moving this object in our scene, which is very helpful. And we can most certainly go ahead and set in a specific value. So the move tool, for instance, let's say if we wanted to move 60 degrees in the x-axis, we'd simply double click, type in a value of 60, and that's exactly where we're going to be. And the same thing, of course, goes for the rotate tool. Now you'll see with the Rotate tool, if we go ahead and rotate, and once we release, you'll see our manipulator refresh back to world settings. This is because we're using global reference. Now if we'd like to change this so that the constrained rings follow the orientation of our selected object, we can most certainly do so by heading over to our side toolbar and choosing local mode. Now as we start to rotate, that constraint ring will follow the orientation of our UFO. Now with local and global mode, we can update all three axes. So in this case, as we rotate in the x-axis, it's only the x-axis we're updating, but if we were to start to rotate in the y-axis, notice all three are updating, which may not be too clean for animation. So if we just want to rotate in one direction, rather than going to the coordinate field, we can simply switch our reference mode from local to additive. Notice how our constraint rings change. This is basically going to allow us to just rotate in one direction, just affecting one direction, which is great. Now, we only have this additive mode with the Rotate tool, and this will not apply to a Motion Builder control rig. To clearly show you this, let's go ahead and load in a character model. I'll head over to our project files, and we can load in Maya Rig. Simply just merge that into the scene, once you drag and drop, we'll choose FBX Merge, No Animation. With that now loaded up, we'll head over to our Navigator, expand the scene, select Maya Control Reference, we can go to our Move tool now, pressing the T key, and let's go ahead and just move her over to the side in the X-axis. From there, I'll press the F key to frame in on the selected object and just back up the camera a bit, and we can go ahead and work with her feet. So selecting one of her foot controls, if we were to go to our Rotate tool, again pressing the R key, Notice we can only choose from global or local mode. Now what's great is that local mode with the control system is very similar to additive mode. And the control rigs in Motion Builder are very robust, so we really don't have anything to be concerned with. Our performance is still going to be spot on using local mode.
when animating on this control rig. But I did want to show you again that we are not able to use additive mode, the rotate tool on a motion builder control rig. Okay. So we've learned how to move objects and rotate objects, but how about scale? Well, to scale an object, we'd use the S hotkey or simply select it from the side toolbar. Notice again we're able to scale in different directions. You can use the center manipulator to scale in all three axes. Pretty straightforward. Now something neat about the scale tool and also the rotate tool is that there's more to these tools. So for instance, if we were to hold down the scale tool at the side toolbar, we can go ahead and choose scale volumetric. This is going to give us a squash and stretch scale. So watch what happens when we choose that. First we'll notice that our center manipulator disappears. Not able to use that in this mode. But as we start to move in different directions, notice we get this volumetric scale. Again, great for squash and stretch results. Now for the rotate tool, its extra feature is rotate around. This is for rotating with multiple objects. So if we were to choose rotate around, and I'll go ahead and head over to templates. Let's go ahead and expand that element and go into primitives. We'll go ahead and just add in a few cubes. And then I'll go ahead and right click to exit the tool. So with rotate around, what we're basically able to do here is rotate around our last selected object. So right now in this case, the last selected object is cube. So I start to rotate. That's going to be the pivot point for this rotate tool. If I were to deselect by simply double clicking, go ahead and select in the, the opposite direction, selecting the second cube last. Now that's going to be our pivot point. So those are some cool features with the Rotate and Scale tool in Motion Builder. We've also learned how to work with the Move tool, and we've taken a look at the Reference Mode settings.